Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix. Now we've got Ben from Japan on. Are you there, Ben? Yes, this is Ben. Um, um, I saw just seen TT Pro program in Japan about, um, like about a microchip where they, I think they connect something to your ear yep. and it's for video games. Yes. And another person had, had, another person had um, kind of like a handheld control similar to controlling a, uh, a remote control car. Yes. And um, when the person would adjust the handheld control, the test object would either stumble to the left or stumble to the right. Uh, yeah. It would affect his coordination and balance. That's correct. I've read about it. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was marketed to for people who are, who are video game addicts so that they would the best thing for video games where you play the video game and it's so much more better because if you're on a motorbike in the video game and you turn a corner, the corner your body would actually lose balance and stumble to, stumble to the right. Yes, it, 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 it affects your spatial ability. They, they tested this out years ago in, in Canada, in fact, at Waterworld here, and they had, they had mm-hmm. a game you could strap yourself into, like a virtual reality game, and put a helmet on you, and you could walk up walls in the game and across ceilings, and then when they let the people go, they found out that their spatial ability was so distorted, they adapted so quickly to do impossible things, that when they got into their cars, they couldn't judge distances or speeds, and they were crashing into people. So you're quite right, the brain adapts so quickly to this kind of, of uh, treatment uh, that, that uh, your coordination is, is completely put off. And if you turn to the right afterwards, you, you might go all around the, the way in a complete spin. You'll spin right round. 360 degrees and you didn't mean to so that's exactly what Joseph Delgato did with his testing on the bull with, with brain chips in fact uh, back in the 70, early 70s from the FBI yeah. yeah it was quite amazing because the guy had the control in his hand so it was like controlling a guy's sense of balance was like remote controlling a, a car exactly uh, a car. Yeah. Yeah, so, well that's what Joseph Delgato did only he had the little remote and he controlled the bull that was charging towards him. He could make it stop, turn right or left, and do whatever he wanted to. So, so it's the same old technology being rehashed as something brand new uh, to get us used to the idea. Well, Gado, who ran the FBI department on mind control at one point, was controlling bulls in the arena back in the 1950s and 60s completely. So the stuff that you're talking about and it's published in the so-called magazines and so on that you look at is completely and utterly obsolete. These guys are so far advanced and stuff, they don't publish to you that they're quite confident they can pull this off. And it's not just about getting a brain implant. Who the hell do you think is going to program you when you're in this virtual re- real world? Yourself? You won't be doing it. They're programming you through the you. television set. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, I mean, these guys are so stupid. On the one hand, they believe that there's somehow some altruism left amongst the psychopaths that allow them to go into this virtual world that will be part cyborg and part this and part something else and, and be allowed to do what they want. The whole intent of this virtual world is so that you can be completely and utterly controlled. You find at the, at the World Science Meeting held in Louisiana uh, in, in 2001, at Loyola University, they said our purpose is to make sure that we know such thing as a distinct individual. Undoubtedly, there's a lot of secret technology. From your research, how much more advanced is it, or do we have no idea? I, I think from the clues of the past, that's where you go on, and uh, they're probably at least 200 years ahead of where we are. Um, when you look into the writings even of... Uh, uh, Mary Shelley, for instance, Shelley was, her, her husband, the poet, was a member of uh, the high societies. At that time, they clouded themselves under uh, secret societies and uh, masonry and so on. But in reality, at the very top of that, there was, there was pure science there. And they, they were given access to the sciences of the time. And she didn't come up with her idea of a Frankenstein, uh, someone, a human being put together by body parts by herself. It was because uh, she was in with the groups that were actually discussing this and maybe some who were actually trying to do it at the time. And, uh, and really, they're so far ahead that uh, it boggles the mind. As I say, in the 50s, um, before we even had the transistor radio, uh, they had the CIA, as Nick Biggage showed on television, 
um, he, he showed the equipment which could beam a thought into your head or a, or, a, or a sound or music into the middle, the center of your head on line of sight. So it could go for miles if you were high enough on a hill. You could literally pick your target and do it then. It was more than voice to skull. And, uh, but it also, these things also had the capability of um, interfering with, with the, uh, basically the wave that comes, the pulse for, for your heart. It, it originally it's in the brain. And you can interfere with that pathway and give a person a heart attack. Uh, now this stuff, you could put, these little gadgets you could put in your pocket in the 1950s, it had to be incredibly uh, amazing solid state circuitry with micro transistors, etc. Oh, let me stop you. To, you know, I talk about, you talk about it too. Aldous Huxley, uh, Julian Huxley's brother, who wrote about genetic engineering and, and, and GMO food and different classes of humans in Brave New World, published in, what, 32, 33, he gave a speech when he knew he was dying and said, this is all real, and even though I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to stop us, and was laughing at everyone. They thought he was being a good guy, warning them. And, and he said, at our universities, we have people with uh, microelectronics already in their brain, and we're already testing this to be able to remote control humans. And then in, by the 70s, they admitted they had microchip remote control cockroaches in university r- r- reports. They're just now telling the public now. So here he was saying, actually, my book isn't fiction. This is what we've been doing secretly. Uh, you know, decades ago, we had microelectronics in people's brains. Oh, yeah. And you have had the Delgado, I should say, famous for his bull, uh, where he put a microchip in his brain and, and remotely controlled it. He could stop a charge from the bull. But he, he was also, and there's actually videos up there on YouTube where he's talking about it wasn't just uh, animals he was practicing on, he was practicing on humans. Of course he was. And uh, uh, so this is a very old, this is very old stuff because the, the idea when they, when they began this, this uh, socialist movement, the most folk think is left wing, it's really at the top of the, the right wing who run the socialist movement. And that's why banks are all behind it and so on. But uh, they knew they wanted to bring in a society of well-behaved people who would simply be a slave society, cause no problems, no crime. And how do you make that happen? Well, they, they dissected all forms of conflict, all, all conflict, right down to the family home, by the way. They can't mean me. I mean too much to me for it happened to me. That's what we think, isn't it? And yet, what was it again that Delgado said, the FBI, CIA guy who was sticking wires in folks' brains years ago uh, using remote controls, etc.? I thought it was wonderful. They were doing that in Tavistock in England too, according to Aldous Huxley, who thought that was wonderful as well back in the 50s. He says, we need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. We must electronically control the brain. Some days armies and generals will be controlled by electronic stimulation of the brain by Delgado, Director of Neuropsychiatry at Yale University Medical School, 1974. I also touched on the Brain series to show you. It's quite interesting, too, the the BBC series. I mentioned that a week or two ago. And um, it's presented by a lifer. I call them lifers at the BBC. That's a a job for life. And his job, Mr. Moses' life, is to... Uh, be a rah-rah cheerleader for all scientific exploration and to people, the brain, and all the rest of it. Uh, he, I think he started studying psychology. I don't know if he dropped out, but then he went to work. And strangely enough, these careers, these guys like Mr. Mosley, he went off to work as a banker in the city of London, then stopped that and came back to work for the BBC. So he's got a mission there, obviously. And you'll hear him look at some of these experiments. And these are just little clips, by the way, unfortunately, from the series, not the whole series, I think each one was an hour long, but little clips to show you what he was into and how he presents things to the public. And he he loved Pavlov like they all do. Uh, And I've mentioned before how Pavlov uh, experimented not just on dogs by shocking them and and being cruel and then destroying them, of course, uh, within passion, of course, no no passion whatsoever, Uh, just clinical interest, like a lizard staring at you. And... um, and he wanted to be very famous, of course, like they all do. 
But you'll hear this, Mr. Mosley, justify after saying, oh, it's terrible what happened and some of the experiments. And believe me, the experiments he's touching on are just the, a few of the more tamer types, believe it or not. But he, 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 uh, he says, but it's good for miracles. We, 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 we achieve so much knowledge from these experiments, even the ones with depriving monkeys from their mothers, etc. Put them in a hole for a year and then watching to see what kind of neurotic they had created. He thought it was all worth it in the long run. He also himself goes through on the series, the whole series, you'll see him going into an MRI machine in Holland, uh, where obviously something for the government is at play there from one of the, the, the higher services, because you don't get an MRI machine to test the occasional person for a psychology. It's awfully expensive. But anyway, he gets tested in there and asks certain questions and so on, and he actually scores within the psychopathic range himself. So he's ideally suited for his job and the BBC. That's Mr. Mosley. So I'll put the clip on, and one of them is Pavlov's children, because I mentioned before that Pavlov actually um, didn't use simply dogs. He also did the same experiments by putting holes in the necks of children to collect their saliva, tying them down, strapping them down, and then training them to, to open their mouths when a little bell would ring and out would pop a little biscuit into their mouth. Uh, a very nice character he was. He ranks alongside Mengele and many others, and the psychologists just love him for his dedication to his work. So I'll put that up and a few other ones, a few other clips from the main series tonight, and grab them because they'll probably get pulled pretty quickly, no doubt. So that's what we're living through. As I say, we're living through a, a hell, in a sense. It's a planned hell with the use of psychology and um, very high sciences and also, engineering is going on with it too. Electrical engineering. I've gone through the harp technology, the frequencies, etc. I was listening to them today again on the short wave, and they're still booming out. They called it the woodpecker uh, sound. I put up the links to the 85 CNN series on on this technology. You'll hear the harp there. And you can actually still hear the exact same thing going on all throughout the day on different bands or different frequencies within the shortwave radio. And that's where they first picked it up in the West was on shortwave radio. Still going strong, been going strong since 2001, 24 hours around the clock. The very technique that uh, Brzezinski was uh, touching on in his book Between Two Ages when he said that this technology could be used across whole continents either to make people aggressive or uh, quieten them down, make them placid, and they can actually make you very stupid as well. So they're using this technology today, and I don't need someone to, to tell me they're not, because I, I, I know what the harp sounds, sounds like. I've got the evidence of the old recordings put out by governments, and I've got the identical things showing up on shortwave today. It's the same thing. Same thing. I mentioned yesterday, too, about the Solomon uh, Ar- Ash. His name is ESCH uh, Studies in conformity, and uh, it's so interesting to, to again, this is very low-level stuff that they'd, they were doing in the 1950s, because the whole point, it wasn't just to find out how people conform, it's, it's they want people to conform, you understand, and so they can update you all at the same time. That's why they give you celebrities and stars to follow, because you see, they found in these experiments, in the Ashes experiments, they found that uh, the one person who didn't know uh, there was a scam going on would go along with the group, maybe four or five, maybe 14 people who were all in on the scam. He was the only real test subject there, and he would conform to the bizarreness of the answers that they went along with. Back with more after this break. Hi, folks. This is Cutting Through the Matrix, talking about mind control tonight, just a little, little bit and touching on it. It's only scraping the surface. You can't do much in an hour, certainly not in any depth and certainly not in any educational capacity. But all you can do is, is give out stuff that's already out there, of course. What's out to the public is always low level and generally obsolete. They're, beyond, they're way beyond whatever they tell you, even when expose it on the news. And I mentioned the CNN uh, program, and I put the links up last night too, uh, from 1985 on advanced weaponry. They talked about Tesla technology, stuff that was produced at the beginning of the 20th century and how that could affect people's minds too. And then it went through the whole the whole thing to do with the Riga um, antennas that they put up, the Soviets put up, we were putting up the, the woodpecker technology, and, uh, and so on and so on. And in America too, they were doing the same thing, actually. 
because they shared the secrets. Because every year I say, wonder why would, if you were such enemies with your enemy over there, uh, why would you send um, all your top scientists across there every year for international science meetings, especially when they kept saying that those with the best science would win this Cold War? Made no sense to me. And then I knew well they're all in it together. They're sharing their data, and and that's what really was happening. The Cold War was literally. Uh, this, the excuse to tax the people into research and to find all the technology that's now being used against you today. And again, the Rees Commission in the 1950s talked about blending the Soviet system with that of the West. That was a job of the big foundations that came out in official inquiry that was, that was signed off by the Congress. So we're experiencing it now. Now, in the 1985 uh, series from CNN on a lot of this experimentation of microwave radiation and different kinds of pulsating radiation, magnetic radiation, and so on. It says this, it says, um, and Delgado, he's talking to, Del, the interview is talking to Delgado, who was involved in MK Ultra. He worked for the Pentagon. He did work with the FBI and CIA. He was, he's the guy who famously put in the implant in the bull's head, had it charge him, and then switched on his little remote and had the thing stop in its tracks. And this is what he says here, because he was a real fanatic into this area of controlling human populations and mind control. Uh, Delgado says, By connecting a radio antenna to electrodes inserted into the bull's brain, Delgado proved the animal's aggressive impulses could be thwarted by electronically manipulating the bull's muscle reflexes. And then Delgado says here, replied, this is on the, 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 this is the, the text from the actual uh, show. It says, do you realize the fantastic possibilities if from the outside we could modify the inside? Could we give messages to the inside? That's the inside the brain. But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. They already had the techniques back then. And I've gone through the, the Corbin helmet that was used in Canadian universities here and psychology experiments. And they can actually stroke their brain with uh, very low-level magnetic pulses. You see, your electric pulses in the body don't work on high uh, ele- electricity, high voltage or high amperage. It's tiny, it's tiny, it's minute. And, it's, and when you get the right frequencies and it's minute enough, you can actually affect the way the brain works. And they could, they found out they could stimulate, and I've got that in the archive section too, uh, they could stimulate um, the feelings and experiences you'd have uh, from LSD, for instance, you'd have the same kind of trip, and uh, it was done by stroking the brain. And isn't that interesting? It ties in uh, with uh, the article I read about a year ago where Google was talking about their experimental departments working on a helmet that stroked the brain. They could literally read your brain for you personally, find out how you reacted to games, just to get the children involved, of course, and it's so innocent too. The parents don't get involved. That's just the children playing. Meanwhile, their brains are being mapped and then the thing adapts to the brain of that child. We can also, conversely, uh, start manipulating parts of those, the brain where it knows, uh, where it knows things will certainly happen and manipulate the behavior of that child. Don't forget it's a two-way street here. Don't forget that for a minute. And at the same time, they also talked about, there's another department on Google was working on, or is Microsoft working on, uh, one that didn't need a helmet. They would build the antenna basically into the frame of the, of the screen in the computer, and that would be able to hit you from a, quite a few feet away, maybe across the room for all I know, and same technology. So it's out there, folks. And remember, as I keep telling you, the computer is put out there by the military-industrial complex. It's an essential, if not the key, the key essential to this whole, what we now call the New World Order. It's essential. You couldn't get this whole world under surveillance and everything else without it. But this article goes on to say, In recent years, Delgado, this is back in the 80s, had shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsing magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. Delgado says, Any function, the brain, emotions, intellect, personality, uh, could we perhaps modify by this non-invasive technology? Delgado's research has so far been limited to animals. That's not true, because they always give you this guff when they give something out to the public, as they did with Pavlov. As I say, this link up up tonight, have a look at Pavlov's children and see what you think of that. Because they said about the same thing about him for 70 years. Oh, he just experimented on animals. You know. 
Anyway, it says, when the Soviet Union, a radio frequency or RF device, has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients, it's called a LIDA machine. It radiates pulses of radio frequency energy as well as light, sound, and heat. The pulse rate is in the extremely low frequency range between 0 and 100 pulses per second. Dr. Ross Eddy is a top researcher at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Loma Linda, California. He's been investigating the effects of the LIDA machine there on, on the ex-vex, right? That's what, that's what they do. They use these, these uh, vets at hospitals for practicing and, and experimenting on. It says here, now what do the Soviets use the machine for? And Eddy says, well, they don't use it anymore. We should be very clear that this is a machine that's regarded by them as somewhat obsolete technologically. Isn't that amazing, eh? It made the children very placid, you see. They didn't give them amphetamine like they do here if if they're a bit active, like boys always are. They used the machines on them. It says, The scientist who didn't want his identity revealed is employed by the U.S. government has done and has done secret RF weapons research. He believes that tests done with ELIDA and similar machines prove that humans are susceptible to remote alterations of mood and awareness. The same stuff that Brzezinski was talking about that could be used across whole continents. Remember that. Always remember. Next, on to actor as a scientist. And again, it's a CNN uh, series that they had on in, the, in the 80s on television. Certain kinds of weak electromagnetic signals work exactly like drugs. And so the promise is that anything you can do with drugs, you could do with the right electromagnetic signal. And that's been rehashed and brought out recently again. Apparently there are specific sites involved, specific functions involved. It's a matter of matching them up, just like it is with a pill or a drug to cause an effect. You could have a cause and effect relationship between a magnetic field and a biological function. Of course they can, because they're already doing it with the brain. So it's it's quite interesting too. It says uh, CNN en- enlisted the help of noted physicist Dr. Elizabeth Rocher and electrical engineer Bill Van Bice to build and test an RF mind interference machine from data found in Soviet scientific literature. The machine itself was inexpensive and easy to construct using parts from a consumer's electronics store. That was Radio Shack at the time. It's interesting they've changed it entirely. You can't buy the parts anymore. It emits a weak electric signal uh, field pulsed at extremely low frequency. As a subject to the test, I was blindfolded and my ears were blocked to prevent inadvertent clues as to what was happening. A magnetic probe was placed about 18 inches from my head. As the experiment began, two signal generators produced waveform patterns that were transmitted by the magnetic probe at about one thousandth of the Earth's magnetic field strength. And then they, they go through the experiment describing anything that you see and feel and so on. And the control room of Van Bice varied the waveforms being generated. In another room, I could see waveforms changing shape in my mind. So as they changed this in the, on the machine, on the oscilloscope, he would actually see the same thing in his, in his head. In his head, folks. And you think this whole idea of interfacing your brain so you can watch your beautiful games and be in the game in your head is kind of sci-fi? No, it's old stuff. So it says a parabola just went by. And uh, that's what they call it when you, these images appear in your head. And he goes through the whole test here. And so this is the script from, this is the text from the actual uh, show that they put on for the general population. But they can also create different kinds of visual disturbances and so on. And it was also going to be used as weaponry for fighter, against fighter pilots and so on. And yada, 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 yada. Which has all been done a long time ago. Long time ago. But if you wonder why folk are kind of dumb and stupid and, and into, they're actually they're perpetual children now, really. It doesn't matter about their age. Well, maybe, maybe you're starting to catch on what's going on. It's interesting to me, too, that the broadband that they're really putting across Britain at very powerful rates, too, even beyond Switzerland and other countries, is, uh, is to be expanded further and further, so no one can escape this partic- these particular frequencies that are pre- pre- pervasive all over the place there. And they want to do it elsewhere as well. Quite something. Quite something. But, uh, as I say, the public will never catch on, because, you see, the media will, will never tell them, oh, be very, very scared of this, folks. 
like they do with so many other things, impending gloom and doom, and, oh, global warming is going to kill you, and all the movies they churn out. That's him telling you to be very, very afraid. But the other things that are going on, no, 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 it's fine, it's good, it's so convenient. Blasting your temporal lobe with a cell phone, and so on. That's how the real world really does work. So anyway, I'll, I'll put up some links t- tonight to to do with that very this very topic of cybernetics and um, and things that, as I say, that Aldous Huxley knew. He knew. He, 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 uh, he mentioned it on George Wallace's uh, show that. Uh, he was worried about the techniques. He knew the techniques existed. He called the hypnopedia and things like that. He, he knew it was way ahead of that, the behavior as well as sciences. And he had, and he had good access to, to the data too in his day, including the fact that he was so well connected with the Tavistock Institute where they did all this experimentation. And even then, way back in his day, uh, at that time on that show, they were already putting wire, right, straight wires into folks' brains during the Delgado-type experiments on actual humans. They did some excellent movies about that too, by the way, with uh, Christopher Walken in one of his earlier movies, The Mind Snatchers. It was about that, where he plays a, a young American soldier who's a bit of a, a cocky, little low-level type psychopath type in the military. And he suddenly gets transferred to this private hospital and he ends up being used as an experiment. And right to the very end, it's never going to work with him. It's not going to work. But he ends up with getting the, the, the basically the wires put in. And those days, they did have the, the early Dalgato stuff too, where they had exter- an external buzzer thing. Basically, I, I, it would just buzz the part. Of the, it would make a connection, and the wires going in the brain would make contact, and certain parts of the brain could be stimulated to be very passive. Or he, he, the other one to do was was a rat experiment on humans where they could make them sexually aroused so they could do nothing except play with themselves forever. Uh, until, even to, to the stage, the, like the rats, they, they would eat, etc. That was done. These things were done on people. And it's, it's not imagination. or, or the, there's, there's old documentaries that, they're, that were done. Not, well, it's actually filmed for the experiments at the time. And some of them are now available to the public if they, if they do searches for them. So Walken plays a, a young officer that this is, this is actually done on. So we're, we're living in a, in a system where things that you see manifesting in your lifetime are just the latest version of the same experiments. It, it's, uh, it's getting quite something with the Wi-Fi and what they're, where they're going. With. But again, everything that's happening today was planned to happen back in the 90s, in fact. But there's not a single part of what you read today about what they're, what they're doing or going to do, even with the brain chips that wasn't disclosed in the 1990s in a few publications. So you're living through an agenda, of course, and agendas are very real. Uh, the, the, those in charge of the agendas, the, the world society, the globalistic future, the, the behaviorists and, and psychologists and so on, and neuroscientists that work for the big boys and gals, are quite open about uh, their, their agendas, you see. And they have ways to make us all kind of look forward to it. The same way as advertising, as I say, made you feel that buying this or buying that was going to make you happy. Uh, the, the whole point is they can make you less and less happy so that you will take uh, the, the, the brain chip when it's offered. And there's no doubt at all, in the 90s, they said, because it already experimented as far back as Delgado's era and with the Tavistock group in Britain uh, that Aldous Huxley talked about when he worked with them for a little while. He certainly had access to some of their experiments and, and he'd, he'd walk around and observe their experiments too with real people where they did have wired access to some people's brains, basically, and they tried the, the little press button idea to shock the brain or even give them sexual stimulation uh, and ways to stop them doing impulsive things in certain patients. Old, old stuff. And the intention was always eventually to get into a wireless phase, if possible, and we're living in it today, of course. We're living in a field of electromagnetism and Wi-Fi. And with the 5G 
according to some of the people who work with 5G and, and work with radar, they say this is in the frequency of radar. And uh, these same people who worked with radar for the military say that the 5G was very dangerous if you're right in front of basically the, the cone or the radar that's beaming it, or even around it too, because there's bounce effects as well, as we know, with Wi-Fi, which is microwave, and it gets more and more intense. And I, I keep going back cause, uh, to different people. That, uh, and this, this is, again, what's is wonderful about living a bit longer than some folk at times, is that you remember what they talked about, the, the, the bringing up, living in a field of Wi-Fi, this mag- electromagnetic field that could even have basically a form of electronic telepathy. That's how they worked upon it. That's how they, 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 they called it that, and other names too, including Persinger, who was a, the, the professor at one of the universities in Canada here for years. He talked about it. I gave talks, and I don't know if it's still up on YouTube or wherever, but I put it up ages ago with the link to one of his talks where he talked about how wonderful it would be when we're all bathed in this Wi-Fi, but with obviously uh, the knowledge, right, from his perspective, that, that he knew would all feel the same things at the same time, including they could make us, make us all, they, you know, they, again, quotation marks, could make us feel hunger pangs, real hunger from starvation in parts of, say, Africa or somewhere. And how wonderful that would be. And I thought, well, that's just one thing. They could do anything with us all. But, but who gives them the right to do that in the first place? I mean, you talk about intrusive. And bit by bit, folk have given up the protections and their rights to, to, to privacy and so on. And once they get into your mind, and you're not even aware they're manipulating you, how, how intrusive is that, folks? I hope you realize what's going on here, because you, you accept things so, so calmly, and it's presented again as, oh, it's so wonderful and convenient. I was talking about Delgado there, Dr. Jose M. R. Delgado. He he was the director of neuropsychiatry. Neuropsychiatry is very big, um, and neuroscience is very big. The art of literally um, controlling everyone uh, is, is what it's about, really. And uh, they're heavily into working with the internet and um, and what's coming up for interfacing humans and human brains with the net. But he says, uh, he said this, this Mr. Delgado guy, again, he worked with the Pentagon, CIA, and so on. He says, we need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Physical control of the mind. That's your internet, everything. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. For the harder thinking, I'll repeat that last part. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. We must electronically control the brain. He's talking of his own peer group. Someday armies and generals will be controlled by electronic stimulation of the brain. And he said that's in the U.S. congressional records from Dr. Jose M. R. Delgado, director of new psychiatry, uh, Yale University Medical School. And it's in number, tw- uh, it's in the record of the Congress, number 26, volume 118, February 2474. So uh, these characters are profuse. He's not a loner out there. And they have lots of uh, academia on board to solve the eternal problems of humanity, something that Aldo Huxley went into too in his lectures at Berkeley and elsewhere. And you can find them up on YouTube. You've gone to my archives, you'll find them too in the audios. And he talks about how people are just not very happy and how they should use pharma and every other means to make them happy and make them more uh, manageable. Uh, that was what it was all about. And he looked forward to the day when they could find other techniques as well to where, in his own words, a small group of people could control billions of minds across the world. A small group, he said. High science. And also tonight I'll put up one. It's called Psycho Civilization and Its Discontents, an interview with Jose 
uh, Delgado. Delgado, remember, too, was into putting implants, electric implants, into animals and humans back in the 60s on behalf of the U.S. government to try and find ways of managing whole populations of peoples down the road. You've got to start somewhere, right? And uh, there's also videos up on Delgado, an awfully arrogant scientist, as they all are, of course, because they were given special permission to do things that they should have been hung for, literally hung for. Uh, and that's what government does. They can actually decide who gets hung and who doesn't. It's okay when government gives them a special permission to do abominable things. But it's the show it says here, the letter, the letter from Professor Delgado carries two insignias, one's made of Hebrew letters and what looks like a Torah scroll. Under the scroll it says Lux et Veritas, which is light and truth, and the other insignia reads Investigation Ramon y Cajal. In our letter to him we have explained there were two artists that they wanted to study his astonishing research. So they had an interview with this guy. And he's still, of course, as gung-ho as ever to find ways of controlling the public. And, I mean, don't forget Delgado uh, really didn't believe that people had the rights to think for themselves, literally. Literally have their own opinions. He really did not believe that. He was he really believed in a small elite running the world, again, in a scientific uh, group around them, uh, managing all the rest of the herd down below them for peace, you understand. It's only going to have peace has controlled the herd through mind control of various forms. What he was into was more direct stuff, putting wires right into the brains of people, and also put up a link tonight to one where you actually see him doing it on people, that is. It was great, too, how they managed to keep it all from the public for many years. They was actually sticking <laughs> the stuff into people's brains. You understand, whatever you're, you're told is a lie from governments. Whatever you're told, too, is always a different reason that they're doing it than the one they're going to tell you. There's always something way beyond anything you'd figure out why they're really doing things. And when they give you the latest of things that they're up to, it's generally 50 years old. They're way ahead of it by then. But see, but they used all kinds of electrostimulation in groups of apes and so on, right up to, the, up to humans. And it actually excite them as they could make them turn left and right or sit down or whatever. And his famous one, of course, is the bull, where he actually had implants in a bull. He used a little remote control. As it charged towards him, it stopped. Uh, so would you if you felt a massive pounding, like a, a sledgehammer hitting you in the head, because that's I'm sure what it did to the bull. But he thought, remember, these are behaviorists, you understand, employed by the government. This is no little out-the-way scientist. He was employed by the U.S. government. And he worked at Yale, for goodness sake. Those who want to buy the books and this I have at cuttingthroughmidrace.com, look up the website, take notes of all the official sites I, I have there, and you can get the books and discs there. And you can also donate. It tells you where to donate to as well, how you do it. From myself, Alan Watt, it's good night. May your God or your gods go with you. <laughs>